Today, we uncover the long-standing mystery behind IQ signals in 9 minutes. The idea starts with a sinusoid. Sinusoids are important in digital signal processing applications because most practical signal can be constructed as a sum of these sinusoids with different frequencies, amplitudes, and phases. Let us run a little demonstration. Here we have a few sinusoids with frequencies 1 kHz, 3 kHz, 5 kHz, and 7 kHz. This is the summation waveform. So when 1 kHz is turned on, we can see this here. 3 kHz is turned on. We have a summation of 1 kHz sinusoid with amplitude 1 and 3 kHz sinusoid with amplitude 1 by 3. 5 kHz with amplitude of 1 by 5 and 7 kHz with an amplitude of 1 by 7 are added. You can see this waveform resembles something we know very well, that is a square wave. This was a little demonstration to show that even a waveform like a square wave can be thought of a summation of sinusoids with some particular frequencies. I can go to 9 kilohertz, 11 kilohertz and so on when this approximation will become a little better. We just saw that most practical signals can be constructed from different sinusoids of varying amplitudes, frequencies and phases. The most well-known signals we know from them are cos 2 pi ft and sin 2 pi ft. The question is how to generate the sinusoid with particular frequencies, amplitudes and phases or to target the easier problem how to measure the amplitude and phase of a sinusoid. Since frequency is a function of phase we just focus on amplitude and phase here. Let us target the easier task of amplitude measurement first. If we have a sinusoid with a certain frequency and amplitude if, and when we multiply it with the same frequency sinusoid the output is a constant which is the amplitude. 2 we have the same frequency with amplitude of 2 the output is 2 and why is it so? Simple trigonometric relation which is called the product formula and we have a constant output a double frequency 2f this is the double frequency which you can see and it can easily be filtered out to find the constant that remains. First we need to know what phase means. We write an expression phi or theta in cosine expression. Most people know that it shifts the sinusoid by some amount. For example this is a sine wave and this is a shifted sinusoid which is representing a particular phase. How to find out what phase it is? For this purpose, we write this expression as cos 2 pi f t plus phi over 2 pi f. And we take f equals 1 so that we can clearly see what is going on, which makes this expression 2 pi t plus phi over 2 pi. Now we can see that when phi is 0, then this is cos 2 pi t, a frequency 1 sinusoid. When phi is 90 degree, then this is 90 over 360, 1 by 4. Here we can see that this sinusoid is shifted by 1 by 4 period. And this point comes here. And this is cos 2 pi ft plus 90 degree. When phi is 180 degrees, so 180 over 360 is half. Here we can see that this sinusoid is shifted by half a period. So this point comes here and so on. We learned that phase shift is related to the time shift depending on the frequency and the next task is to see how to measure this phase. For this purpose, one method is to look at the time reference and note the amplitude over there. For example, this one here, this one here, this one here and find out the phase with respect to this amplitude. The problem, however, in this approach is that every point in a sinusoid appears not in one location but in two locations. For example, here and here, here and here. And for a general case, you can see it is cutting the sinusoid at this point and at this point. How do we know that the point we are referring to is the one while going up or the one while going down? 
For example, here we have a signal cos 2 pi ft plus 60 degree and cos 2 pi ft plus 300 degree. I hope that you can draw these signals from the understanding we have acquired so far. Here we can look at point 5 and say that this is cos of 2 pi ft plus 60 degree because cos 60 degree is point 5. By looking at the amplitude, we can find the phase. Or can we? Because cos of 300 degrees is also 0.5. The next step is to find this amplitude and the slope at this location. If it is negative, we know that this is cos of 2 pi ft plus 60 degree. And if this slope is positive, we know that this is cos of 2 pi ft plus 300 degree. If we know the value of the amplitude. There are dozens of practical problems in adopting this approach. And that is why we move towards IQ signals, which is a very simple solution. Something really interesting happens when we apply the identity cos alpha plus beta equals cos alpha cos beta minus sin alpha sin beta to our phase shifted sinusoid. A, I have included an amplitude A here, cos 2 pi ft plus phi equals A cos 2 pi ft cos phi minus A sin 2 pi ft sin phi. We can take this constant term cos phi and join this with amplitude A so a cos phi cos 2 pi ft minus a sin phi sin 2 pi ft. What is not immediately visible here is something remarkable we have done. We have gone from a phase shifted sinusoid to two sinusoids which are not phase shifted. One is cos 2 pi ft, the other is negative sin 2 pi ft. These are zero phase sinusoids. But where is the phase then? The phase appears with the amplitudes part, a cos phi and a sin phi, a cos phi and a sin phi. In summary, we have gone from the phase shift of a single sinusoid to amplitudes of two zero phase sinusoids. This is the whole essence of IQ signals. Therefore, I repeat this part. We have gone from the phase shift of a single sinusoid, which is very difficult to measure or generate, to two zero phase sinusoids where the phase information is in their amplitudes now a cos phi and a sin phi we have already seen in the first part of the tutorial how to measure the amplitude of a sinusoid which is very easy and hence we make the phase measurement easy by measuring the amplitude of two sinusoids one the cosine and the other the negative sign the phase information is in their amplitudes. We can see here the shifted sinusoid, the green waveform can be represented as a cosine wave with some amplitude and a negative sine wave with some amplitude. When we measure those two amplitudes, we have a cos phi and a sine phi and we know that after the cosine amplitude measurement and the sine amplitude measurement. They are called in-phase and quadrature IQ. The name comes from there. We go from here to the phase part by simply dividing the sine part with the cosine part. This by this. That gives us tan phi and tan inverse would be the phase if it was in the first quadrant. From the signs of the amplitudes we can also find out which quadrant the phase was in so this was a short summary of what iq signals are about i have written a long article iq signals 101 neither complex nor complicated on my website wirelesspy.com if you are interested you can read the article over there i will also give the link below please let me know in the comments what you think about the tutorial